worship this morning. If you are joining us online, we are delighted that you're worshiping with us. There is a pinned comment with two links. One is our giving link and the other is um, our connect card link. We would love to know that you are worshiping with us online. Um, and just drop a um, good morning in the comments or um, please share your prayer concerns if you would like to so we know how we can best pray for you. Um, we are delighted to be in worship this morning. I will confess that it has been camp week, so um, I am still in recovery mode, but so glad that you are here with us this morning um, to, to enjoy a little bit of worship together. Um, we do have an announcement on the 22nd. We will be having our um, children's movie night. Megan is organizing that. Please bring your kids, bring your neighbors, bring your neighbor's kids, bring your friends, your family, and come and enjoy um, some time together as we just relax and watch a movie together. So that's coming up. We have a lot of things that are happening. Please check our email. If you're not on our email list, contact the church office and we'll be happy to get you connected in that way. So um, Wes has asked for a couple of, well, minutes, but I don't think it'll take that long, um, in announcements this morning, so I will let him. I can. <laughs> yes, you can. I have the ability to. Uh, last week, uh, Mandy was up here during service, and she talked about the staff, and uh, all. she said some nice things about all of us. Well, Mandy is starting her eighth year here at Forest Hill, and she's been a gift to this church. Uh, and I just wanted a chance to say thank you to Mandy for all she's done and for her love for God and her love for this church and to give you a chance also to, say, to remember that this is a gift that we get to have her here this long. Thank you. So let's stand and begin our worship with a word of prayer. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the rain that falls from the sky to remind us of your gift of life and grace. As we come to this moment, we bring all of who we are to this place. We bring our struggles and our fears. We bring our joys and our celebrations. And we come just as we are. And you love us just as we are. Lord, as we come this morning, we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit upon us, that you would renew our hearts and our minds, that you would quiet our desires and our fears and our struggles so that in these moments we may worship you with all that we have and all that we are. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Good morning. God of Father, you give me grace, a grace I cannot earn. God, your grace, it's always there, a grace that changes me as I wait. You make me strong as I long, you draw me to your arms as I Lord, you come. 
Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. We're grateful for the freedom to gather and worship with you and worship you. We ask that you help us to glorify you in our words and deeds, in our prayers and interactions with others. Stay close to us that we may grow closer to you.
seated. We have a number of names on the prayer list that seems to grow for some reason. Uh, as you know, Ed Britt died a week ago this yesterday, and his funeral was on Wednesday. We remember his family, uh, Janice and the kids and all the grandkids. Uh, we remember Jim Thorman. He's still in the hospital, and he's had a rough week. He, they're in between get him getting strong enough to go to rehab. But he's just sort of been stuck there, and they're tr- working on that. Dan Truitt is home uh, uh, at his daughter's, but he's had a, maybe a bout with a light t- case of pneumonia there looking at. Uh, Cindy Smith is in, in uh, the hospital still in Raleigh, but doing better. Evelyn Potter is still waiting to hear, uh, or we're working on her cancer diagnosis. And Don Rogers is doing really well. Uh, he's been up and about and going and doing. He can't do everything he wants to do, but he can get out and cause trouble. Uh, we remember Carolyn Rausch and Becky Berenger as they both uh, recover with broken bones. And uh, we remember Angie Morrison. Angie's uh, got a, a, another step to go. It's not necessarily a step we wanted, but it's the next step, and the doctor's uh, trying to deal with her pain and, and help her be better. Uh, we remember Harold and Betty, and uh, Harold wanted to be here to pack on uh, uh, Thursday morning we packed for the prison ministry and uh, Betty said you can't go so he stayed home uh, or I don't know whether it's Betty or Nancy but one of the two of them or both uh, we remember Lindsay Malden and Kathy Williford and David Buckland they're all in stages of uh, dealing with cancer Kathy has her uh, test x-ray test tomorrow to see how the, her, she's been progressing with the chemo she's been on we're remembering the beginning of our, our bilingual preschool as we continue to register children. We remember Troop 88, uh, 888. They're in Philmont walking out in that hot uh, New Mexico sun, and they'll be driving back this coming weekend. And so we remember them. And we thank uh, Mandy and Justin and all the kids that went on our uh, Carolinas Cross Connection this week. They worked through a brutally hot week. Uh, but they did a great job, and you're going to see pictures of that in a little bit. Uh, Bess uh, Brown asked us to remember Todd Ware, who was a regular at Hot Dogs, and he's have, struggling really uh, badly with uh, COVID right now. Uh, Debbie Tucker's family has had a tough week. Uh, her cousin was the young man who was killed when the ditch collapsed on him earlier this week that you may have read about, and it was her brother uh, who was uh, running the backhoe, and we remember all of that family, uh, including his daddy, Kevin, who's lost two sons now in less than a year's time. Uh, Janet Smith is a friend of uh, Becky uh, Overcash's, and uh, she's had surgery and is recovering. Uh, Ken, uh, Kenny and Pam Fry have both been fighting uh, COVID. And Pam is finally able to be out. Kenny can't yet, uh, but Pam's dad, James Whitley, is in the hospital with uh, in pretty bad shape, and so we remember them. Uh, Bonnie Elliott uh, fell this week, and uh, she's laid up right now in bed, uh, trying to recover. We remember her, and we remember Ann Overcash, who's going through, uh, beginning the journey to deal with uh, her hip and uh, back. And we also remember the folks in Sri Lanka who watched the world turn upside down there yesterday as the government fell apart. And uh, we remember the people of Ukraine. There's a lot of things going on. Let us bow our heads and be in prayer. O oh God, we come with joy and in singing into your house, which we call Forest Hill United Methodist Church. It is good to gather together as your people. We find comfort and strength and challenge as we sing and pray and study and hear your word preached. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you, to worship without fear of a reprisal or a threat of violence or the reality of persecution. We pray for our brothers and sisters who join in worship around the world today. 
for whom this reality of freedom is not true. We pray for those who use this freedom to worship and choose not to worship. This is not a condemnation, but a sorrow that they miss the love that comes from being in a relationship with you. Oh God, our world is filled with beauty and love, with wonder and challenge. But there are places where the world is a mess. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia, caught in a web of violence which we call war. Bombs and bullets, destruction of lives and of buildings and of your creation. All of us have been affected by this war and its attendant consequences. We pray for folks struggling with the rising prices, trying to pay light bills, scrounging money for gas, worried about money for rent, skimping to buy groceries and medicines, not sure what to do with unexpected expenses. Help us to be mindful of these needs and help us to find ways to help. We pray for those whose lives, who live lives of desperation on the border of our country. All around us we see the violence and anger and prejudice erupt in gunfire, in random acts of terror. In Denmark, in Japan, in Chicago, We pray for our nation to find a way to provide adequate healing mental health care. We pray for those who are on opposite sides in the Roe versus Wade decision. Help us to listen to each other and help us to understand the deep passion of both sides. And be near those who are poor and needy and struggle to make life and death decisions. Oh God, we thank you that even in the midst of all these troubles, we can rejoice in your goodness. We can know your deep love for your world. We can experience your deep yearning to bring forgiveness and healing to people's lives. Hear our prayers of intercession for those in need. Be with Janice and her family. Be with Jim and Dan and Cindy and Evelyn and Don and Carolyn and Becky and Angie and Harold and Betty and Lindsay and Kathy and David. Be with us as we work to begin a bilingual preschool. Be with the scout troop as they hike and as they come home. Thank you that we had a safe and good and and a accomplished a lot of good work on Carolina's Cross Connection. Be with Todd, be with Debbie's family, be with Janet, be with Kenny and Pam, be with James, be with Bonnie, be with Ann, and be with the folks in Sri Lanka. We offer our prayer in the strong name of our risen Lord who taught us to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our offertory scripture this morning comes from Matthew um, 15, beginning at verse 35. That is not right. My page flipped when I was on the way up here. Let's try that again. Matthew 14, beginning at verse 34. And this is, um, Matthew 14 is what we spent all week studying while we were at CCC. And so I want to read you this little piece of the 14th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. When they had crossed the lake, they landed at Genesaret, 
And the people who lived in that place recognized him. They sent word throughout the whole region, and they brought him everyone who was sick, and they begged him that they may just touch the edge of his clothes, and everyone who touched him was cured. So this week at camp, the theme was middle of a miracle. And one of the stories that we talked about in scripture uh, was the feeding of the 5,000 and how someone bringing forward their simple gifts were able to be a blessing to all of those around us. And that was really evident in the work that we did this week, seeing everyone do their part and bring their thing together um, to bring the presence of Jesus and the love of God in their life in ways that they haven't been able to experience. This week on the trip, I learned that sometimes it's not about the actual project, like the actual building work, it's about the relationships you form with the people. I've learned from mission trips that you have to really get to know the person, and also you have to speak about yourself to get them to really have a relationship with you, and I think that's really meaningful for both you and them. I learned that it's important to help our neighbors because sometimes we don't have the money to afford the things. Okay, so this week I learned that mission work does not always have to be like a super grand gesture. It can be as simple as helping someone get out of their house and bringing light into their home that they haven't had in a long time. And that really just filled my heart with joy because it really made me see how important the people in my life are and how much I can help without necessarily doing something that I may mess up. Because I did have a lot of anxiety this week, so... This week, I have learned that mission work is important to some people, even though it can be as small as painting shutters or as big as building a ramp, but it's very important to that person. So I learned this week that we have incredible youth. They have really stepped up. They have gone above and beyond. They have learned new skills. They have sat down and talked with people and prayed with them, and they have stepped out of their comfort zone, and it has been amazing to see. I wish you could have all seen. You would have been so very proud. Hug these kids, tell them you love them, and remind them that they are awesome. They are miracles in our world. All right, show of hands. Who changed somebody's life this week? Wrong answer. Everybody lift up your hand. Because you know what you did? You commissioned us, you prayed for us, you supported us with your financial resources, and I am telling you that this group of kids are coming back differently. Justin and I are coming back differently. What we did is we went out into the community and we loved people and they loved us back. We put our hands in the dirt, we sweated, we did all those wonderful things, but at the end of the day, we were reminded that we could be part of a miracle. We could be a piece of God's plan, and that is only possible because we are a community of faith, a community of faith that love and encourage each other, that value what it means to raise our youth in ways that show love and grace, in ways that promote service in our world. We did that. You did that. You were part of a miracle and a part of changing lives because you are faithful. You are faithful in your love, in your grace, in your prayers, and in your gifts. When we give to God, amazing things happen. Even when it doesn't look like much, when we put it together and we ask God to bless it and do something powerful and wonderful, God shows up and God does that. So this morning I celebrate that we are a part of changing lives, not just lives inside of our community, but lives on the outside of our community. May we give God thanks for that and remember how much we are blessed as we give our tithes and our offerings to God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for letting us be a piece of your miracle. Thank you for blessing us with so many resources and so many gifts. And Lord, as we give back to you, we offer you our love and our thanksgiving. We are reminded of how much you bless us. And we give our gifts as our offering, our worship, and our love to you. Amen. I'm going to invite Justin and Wes and Claire. Claire is stepping in this morning for Sheila. Sheila Lowry is our staff parish chairperson, but she is under the weather. Um, So Claire is stepping up to 
um, to lead us this morning. Claire is also a member of our staff parish committee, and we are thankful for all that she does to serve and love our church. I'm really pleased to be able to be a part of this, so I hope you will join in with me as um, we go through this. Dear friends, today we celebrate the appointment of our pastors of Forest Hill. We welcome back Mandy Jones as our senior pastor and Wes Judy as our associate pastor of congregational care. And we officially welcome Justin, Reverend Justin uh, Snyder, as our associate pastor of worship, arts, and missions. We believe they are well qualified, and we have been prayerfully, and they, not me, they have been prayerfully appointed by our bishop, Bishop Ken Carter. Mandy, Wes, and Justin, you have been sent to live among us as bearers of the word, ministers of the sacraments, and sustainers of the love, order, service, and discipleship of the people of God. Today, we reaffirm this commitment in the presence of this congregation. Siblings in Christ, as a people committed to participate in the ministries of the church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, will you, who celebrate this new beginning, support and uphold Mandy, Wes, and Justin in these ministries? We reaffirm our commitment to support you with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, strengthen and sustain us in our ministries together with Mandy, Wes, and Justin as our pastors. Give them and us patience, courage, and wisdom so to care for one another and to challenge one another that together we may follow Jesus Christ, living together in love and offering our gifts and talents in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So on behalf of Forest Hill, we present to you a book of worship that says Reverend Justin Snyder. It is yours to remind you that you're called and you've accepted the call to order the life of the church, to lead in worship, and to administer the sacraments. May you do so faithfully. I invite you to pray with me. Lord God, bless the ministries of your church. We thank you for the variety of gifts you have bestowed upon us. Draw us together in one spirit, that each of us may use our differing gifts as members of one body. May your word be proclaimed with faithfulness, and may we be doers of your word, and not only hearers only. As we who have died and risen with Christ in baptism, gather at his table, and then scatter into the world. May we be one in service to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand and join us in singing. Oh, 
of our hopes and fears Chasing down these stolen years Reaching out for hands unseen On the borderlines The borderlines Oh, how I long for heaven in a place called seated.
are embarking upon um, a sermon series about the miracles of Jesus, and it's inspired by um, our time at camp. We planned it, of course, before camp, but we um, looked at what was going to be um, our theme for camp and kind of went off that. And we've, we have, as a uh, mission group, studied the book of uh, the chapter of the 14th chapter of Matthew all week long. And so this morning is a very familiar story, the feeding of the 5,000. And I think that Bible school also did it. And does anybody remember the song? Rebecca, you know you do. Five, two, one. Um, so anyway, it's something that you will, it will be familiar to you. So here now the reading of the scripture from Matthew 14, and we're going to, um, I'm going to be reading 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desert place by himself, deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd And he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go and get some, they may go to the villages to buy something for themselves. And Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said to them, Bring them here to me. And then he ordered the crowds to sit on the grass, taking five loaves and two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave it to his disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowd and all ate and were filled. And they looked up and they took up what was left over from the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we give you thanks for this, your word. And Lord, we ask now that you would open our hearts to your word and your message in these moments. Amen. So I like food. Do you like food? I like, I got an amen, this is going good. So early in the pandemic, kind of my relationship with food changed. I mean, I've always liked food, but it became recreational. You feel me? Recreational food. I was at home by myself, and I would just cook and eat. Well, not really by myself, but, you know, with my family. We would just cook and eat, and I found that I loved food even more. Now, I live with people who also love food. Will's at the back. He's going he's gonna to get called out here in a minute. Um, but just as important as food is the plan. Right, Will? Since he was a very young child, he always wanted to know, what's the plan? What's the plan for food? What time are we going to eat and what are we going to have? Now, when they got in high school, there was a 3 o'clock text that would come from Grace pretty much every day. What's for dinner? I don't know. It's 3 o'clock. I still have two hours. Give me a break. So the plan for food is often just as important as the meal itself. So when I read this story, I feel Jesus. If I had been there, I would have been the one saying, Jesus, what's the plan? I'm getting hungry. These people are getting hungry. We need a plan. And I don't see how that's going to happen. I can sympathize with Jesus and his disciples because if I would have been there, I would have been asking the same questions. It was getting time to eat. And Jesus is still teaching and he is still loving. He is still finding compassion for these people who are around him. And they begin to look around and say, what's the plan? Now, it wasn't exactly in the plan to have a picnic. They were not even planning for Jesus to be doing this ministry, right? He had gone away because he was grieving. He had just heard the news that John was no longer with them and his heart was heavy and he was going to a deserted place to pray and to renew his spirit and then here come all these people and he had compassion on them. I love that, the way the scripture says he had compassion on them. So it wasn't the plan to have a picnic, but Jesus said, it's okay, we can do this. The miracle that happened of the bread and the fish, it evolved out of Jesus' compassion. Even in the midst of his own grief, of his sadness, he saw the crowd and had compassion on them. When it got late and they were hungry, 
he again had compassion on them and fed them. Jesus told the disciples to feed the crowd. Jesus says in the 16th verse, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. Okay, the disciples are not prepared for this. They're like, okay, great. So let me pull out three of my favorite people here. I got two fish and five loaves. This is not going to go very far, right? You know, they had to be scratching their head and thinking, this is not equaling out. We just don't have enough. You ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like, I just don't have enough? Nobody? I got an amen on I like food and not an amen on I just don't have enough. I am telling you, I feel like that sometimes. Jesus, I just don't have enough. I don't have enough energy. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough. Those disciples were looking down and they said, oh, Jesus, Jesus, we just don't have enough. And Jesus says, mm, maybe, bring it here. Let me bless it and give it out. Jesus looked at them and he said, gather everybody around and just bring me what you got and we're going to bless it and you're going to give it out. Okay, and the disciples, I love this, they said, okay. You see, they've been following Jesus long enough to say, okay, we'll just do that. Like, you're going you're gonna to do this. We'll, we'll participate in what you're saying. Now, I don't know if they had doubt. Probably if I was there, I'd have had a little doubt. Like, ooh, okay, we'll just go with that. You just gather around. I mean, I do that in my life, right? Like, Jesus will say, Mandy, I need you to do this. I'm like, ooh, okay. <laughs> I don't have enough. I don't have enough. But when we trust and when we follow, then we find ourselves in the middle of a miracle. And that's exactly what happened. The disciples, they found themselves in the miracle, in the middle of a miracle. And they began to give it out and they began to participate in what Jesus was doing. Now, they didn't have enough on their own. But when they trusted Jesus to bless it and to do something with it, all of a sudden, there was not just what they needed, but there was an abundance of what they needed. They couldn't see it from the beginning. They had no idea that they were going to take up extras after it was over because it looked like they didn't even have enough to cover a fraction of what was there, and yet Jesus did something amazing. I believe that it is significant that Jesus asked his disciples to participate in the miracle. Jesus said, Jesus didn't say, now you bring them to me, and I'm going to pass it out. You have everybody get in a line, we're going to pass it out. That wasn't how it happened. Jesus said, bring it to me, let me bless it, let me make it more, and you go out and you do the handing out. I think it was significant because I think that that showed those disciples what was happening, the power of that moment, but it was also because God, Jesus allowed them to participate in the miracle. And you know when they're collecting all the leftovers and they're putting it all back in the basket, you know they have to be saying to yourself, themselves and to each other, wow, what just happened here? They saw it with their own eyes. They participated in this moment and they were so blessed. By the experience, I love that because we get invited in that same way. We get invited into the miracles of God. I will tell you that this week at camp, we, said, we named over and over the miracles that we were being involved in, and we could see the miracles unfolding in the week that we spent together. We saw small miracles. For us this week, a miracle looked like seven non-carpenters showing up at someone's house, knocking on their door and saying, we're here to build a ramp. I don't know if they doubted that we could do it as much as I doubted that we could do it, but we rolled up our sleeves we gave what we had, and in the middle of that, we experienced a miracle. 
I will tell you that there were times in this week that we would all say, we don't have enough. We don't have enough energy. We don't have enough muscles, which, yes, I know that is surprising, right? I mean, this powerhouse was on the team. <laughs> it was heavy and it was hard. But what happened is, at the end of the week, with some help from some other people who did, yes, have bigger muscles than mine, we built a ramp. And there is somebody who is now able to leave their house a little easier. And they had been praying that for some strange reason that perhaps they could have this ramp in their life to make it easier. And then we answered that prayer as a ragtag team of seven who looked like we probably couldn't pull off the job. And we couldn't alone. I will tell you, there was a lot of prayer from Mandy Jones that said, God, I am not sure that we got the right assignment. Can we just rethink this? And yet we did it. And we changed somebody's life. And we allowed them the opportunity to tell us their story, to witness to what God is doing in their life. And they allowed us to pray with them and to do the good work of living in community. While Lauren was inside, Lauren Butts, she was inside the house talking, um, they said, do you get paid for this? <laughs> I thought nobody would probably pay us for this. But she said, no, in fact, we have to pay to do this. <laughs> it was a moment when that person truly understood that we were there for something much more than an hourly paycheck. We were there because we loved God and we wanted to show the love of God. And that was a beautiful and magical moment. It was a moment of grace. The disciples, they looked at their resources and they looked so small. It, the scripture says that they looked and said, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. It seemed like so little, but in that, Jesus saw just enough. Jesus had saw everything Jesus needed to create a miracle. But those gifts had to be given. And those disciples had to have faith that it meant something, that it would be enough. And so they participated in the miracle. They laid down their gifts and they allowed Jesus to bless them. We have that opportunity. We have that opportunity in our everyday lives to look at what we have, to look at our gifts, and there are days that we think, I don't even have enough for myself, Jesus. How am I supposed to give this away? And yet when we do, God blesses them and makes them so much more. You don't have to go on a mission trip to do that. You don't have to leave your everyday life to ask God, what is it that I have that I can give you that you can do something beautiful with? Maybe it's just a little bit of energy, just enough energy to call someone and encourage them. Maybe it is just a random act of kindness that feels so small to you but that can change somebody's day. Maybe it's as simple as taking time to pray for somebody who is struggling. We have so much, and when we look at it, and we look at what God has given us, and when we trust that we can give just a piece of that away, just something small, and when we ask God to bless it, miracles happen, and we get blessed in the process. The disciples, they participated in the miracle. They were able to be blessed by something that was really small. But God took it and made it something more. You have something in your life right now that looks small. I have no idea what it is. I have no idea what this thing is, but there is something that God has given you, and it may look very insignificant, but it is not insignificant to God. So when you take that little whatever it is that you have, 
and you let go of it long enough to allow God to bless it, God will do incredible things, and you will find yourself in the middle of a miracle. My challenge for you in this week is will you look for that little bit of something that you can offer, and will you trust God enough to let it go and see what happens? Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you bless us beyond measure. We have so much in our life, and oftentimes it looks like so little. And yet you are the maker of miracles. Lord, take, it, take what it is that we have, bless it, make it more, and do incredible things in this world, and allow us to participate in your miracles in our lives. All this we pray and ask. In the strong and faithful name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand and join us in singing. We've waited for this day. We've gathered in your name. We're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire awakening burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty in this place your glory on our face we look into the sky descending like a cloud you're standing with us now lord unveil our eyes you're the reason we're here you're the love most. I love a few things most, but um, we're joining uh, Michelle into membership this morning. Uh, Michelle Griffin, and she is coming to us from Metropolitan Community Church at, of Charlotte, and she, um, she just feels like she's home, which just oh, makes me feel so good, and she keeps bringing new people with her, um, and that makes me extra happy too, so we're just so glad that you feel at home here, and we're just 
so excited to welcome you. So I just have um, two questions. Will you be faithful to United Methodist Church? And will you be faithful to this congregation, Forest Hill United Methodist Church, by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. Well, we are delighted to have you, and I'm going to let Wes pray for you. Welcome. Oh, God, I thank you for your gift of life, and I thank you for your gift of Michelle to us. I ask you to bless her as she becomes a part of the family, as she finds where she fits, where she can work, and where she can serve you. Surround her with your love and your peace and your joy. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this very moment and forever. Amen. Amen. Come with us. right there.